Hello, darlings. You've all heard of Marilyn Monroe. Some of you know Bridget Fardell. Well, now it's time for the cognac show. I said cognac, ooh, ooh. I said cognac, ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm your ballet blonde, fancy dress. at the Evelyn Alexander Wildlife Rescue Center Gala. And I'm here, it's their summer benefit, and I'm here with one of their biggest supporters, and she's very involved in the organization. She's going to introduce herself to the camera. I'm Shelley Burkowski. I'm the Director of Development for the Evelyn Alexander Wildlife Rescue Center. Now tell my audience about this event and why it's so important that we learn and become more aware of it. Well, first of all, we're Eastern Long Island's only wildlife hospital. That's what people need to know. And this fundraiser is so important. It's our largest fundraiser because we only operate on donations. That's truly amazing that you only operate through donations. Only donations. And how long has this uh, organization been around? A long time. 19 years. 19 years. I remember last year you did a tremendous job. You had a wonderful event. Many people came. And of course this year you're having some wonderful people that are coming tonight, like Cornelia Guest. Yes, she's one of our honorary co-chairs. And also uh, Beth Stern. Yes, Beth Stern will be here. She's a huge supporter of the center. I know, and I've interviewed her so many times, and I'm glad to see that she's going to be attending this event tonight. She usually never misses it. She's, she's, yeah, she's, she's you know, she's, she's really a diehard. Yeah. Big supporter, and you'll, you'll catch her in the hospital with animals all the time. I know, she loves the animals, so I... Tonight, today, I wore my pleather shoes just for her. You, you better. We have, this is a vegetarian benefit. I know that. Every, every animal. Yeah. Everything I'm wearing is pleather. Terrific. Nothing, there's nothing, uh, cotton and, you know, just <laughs> plant stuff I'm wearing. That's great. <laughs> But I, I'm, I'm a big supporter of myself because I do love animals. I, love, I have wonderful dogs, and I know the wild, it's really mostly for wild animals here. Yes. And also I wanted to ask you, tell my audience a little bit more about this foundation and what they should know about it. I mean, there's a lot of things that we don't know about it. 
I think the biggest thing to know is that we're a wildlife hospital and wildlife is all around us and the biggest enemy to the wildlife is us, the humans. We hit them, the animals on the side of the road, they get hurt. So people don't know what to do. 631-728-WILD, they call Give us. Give them that them. number. 631-728-WILD, they can call us around the clock. We have, we're all staffed, 300 volunteers that will go out and rescue the animals and bring them back to the hospital. We have an amazing support group of volunteers, which we could never run without. Well, you guys do a terrific job, and I want you to tell my audience where can we go to find out more information. What is the website? WildlifeRescueCenter.org. You're terrific. Give me Thank a you so much. Thank you for all your Don't support. Don't go away yet. Don't go away yet. We'll be back in a moment, dollies. More interviews coming up. Keep watching. Pink Champagne Kisses. Welcome back, darlings. I'm Cognac with Elaine, and I'm here with Beth Stern, Beth Atrosky Stern, and she is a big supporter of the Evelyn Alexander Wildlife Organization. She comes every year, and she's totally devoted to this organization. Tell my audience, why should we all support, contribute, and donate towards this organization? Well, the wildlife is what makes the Hamptons so magnificent and so beautiful, and we have to keep them safe and keep them living where they're supposed to be living. And the Wildlife Rescue Center here has nurtured and saved countless animals, just keeping it beautiful, and they deserve to live as much as we do. They certainly do, and we must respect them, don't you agree? Oh, please. I treat animals like family members. Yeah. I treat them like people, I really Me do. Me too. I have yeah. two little babies at home, my little dogs, and, and I, I love them dearly. Now, hey, this, this afternoon, my husband and I are swimming in our pool, and we look out into the dunes, and there was a family of deer frolicking, and it was so magical, and I was thinking to myself, they deserve, they have every right to be here as much as we do, and we try to keep them safe, and what's so incredible about this organization is, anytime there is a hurt animal on the side of the road or in your dunes, it, they're just a phone call away, and they're going to rush to the animal and hopefully save the animal, and then release back to where they belong. Truly beautiful, don't you agree? Yeah, they do amazing work and we will, my husband and I will always support um, Ginny and what she's created and what they're doing here. It's really, truly, it's life-saving is what it is. I want you to tell my voice, where can we go to participate, contribute, donate, and support? They, what is the website? They have an incredible website. I think it's the Evelyn Alexander Wildlife Rescue Center, but what you do is you just Google it, or, or I would just Google Wildlife Rescue Center in the Hamptons, and the Evelyn Alexander shows up immediately. You're gorgeous. It's Give me a kiss. simple. Happy summer. And we'll be back in a moment, darlings. Don't go away yet. We'll be back in a moment. More interviews coming up. Keep watching. Pink Champagne Kisses. So with that said, I wanted to uh, thank people that have really helped to make this possible. Um, our host Molly is sitting over there. Molly, this is our host, Molly Channing. Hi. Molly, I'm going to call you up. Molly has so graciously um, donated the use of her the beautiful um, grounds here to have the event, and uh, this is one of the most nicest events that I can remember. It's such a beautiful venue, and uh, we really, really appreciate that. Um, we Thank you, Molly. Thank you. Oh. Well, <laughs> you do the most extraordinary work. Well, thank you. And we've all depended on you. I know I have. I've relied on you for years to help injured animals. Um, sometimes you tell me they're not injured, they're just faking it because they're protecting their nest. Yes. That was amazing right. to learn that. <laughs> Fun facts, right? That's the other thing too, is sometimes they don't need our help and we're there with the phone to answer all questions too, when people have questions about whether they should intervene too. That's another important part of what we do. Um, I also would love to thank our sponsors. We have a, a, a banner inside listing all our sponsors. And thank you to all of them. Please want, look at the banners and patronize these folks when you can because they're the most generous people that have offered up their um, finances to help us put this event on. Um, I also um, wanted to thank, uh, in addition to Molly, um, her assistant Allison. I don't know if she's here today, but she's done a tremendous amount. We've called her for advice many times on where to put this and where to put that. 
And um, anyone who's ever run a big fundraiser probably knows what that's like trying to put something like this on. Also, uh, John Seely. He where's uh, John? John, I saw you somewhere John in the crowd. Raise He's your here hand. Here before, yes. There's John. Yay. He actually. This is actually his yoga place here, and um, he had to put up with us setting up, and we tried hard not to interrupt his his yoga classes because they have beautiful classes here. With can you with imagine the, yoga here? Yoga yes. here with a beautiful view, and uh, but he so graciously helped us out too. We worked, you know lending us the space that he uses for the yoga. Uh, we also, I wanted to thank Diane Marks. She has where are been. You? Oh, oh, oh. Diane, come oh. on up, Diane. Come up, Diane. <laughs> Diane is a very longtime supporter of us. When we first started in 1997, she was with us. And what Diane did for this event was obtain and organize all the artwork and catalog it and price it and to, it did everything, lugged it around, and um, it was just wonderful. We couldn't have done this without her. Hours and hours and hours and I, hours. Actually, was much taller. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, our director of development, Shelly Burkowski, we couldn't have done that without her. <laughs> Shelly, on top of everything else, um, uh, lost her father about four weeks ago oh. and um, still managed to you know, with, with the grief that she suffered, they were very close, still was able to put together a fantastic event, and I, I don't know how she does it. She works at night, at home, on weekends, and everything else. No, so. it's, it's because everybody that showed up today made the event what it is, so thank you everybody yeah, so much for coming. Now I'd like to turn the microphone off, microphone, yeah. over to, <laughs> oh, well, over to um, Shelly while she um, introduces our honorees for the evening. We, we also need to note our honorary co-chair, Francis Cole Jones, okay. Francis, yeah. who's a great help to us. And to, tonight we're here to honor two special people that ever since they came to our organization have tirelessly attended every event. They don't miss anything. They're in Manhattan for events, they're out here, they're huge supporters of the center. And they're not just supporters, they started out as volunteers rescuing animals on the side of the road. They're donors, they're honorary board members, and most importantly, they're friends to us. So Ingrid and Will, we want to bring you up. We have this for them, but if you take a look at the back of this tray, these are photos from everything they've attended. They are oh always God. there for us. We are so blessed to have them in our lives. Right. You, guys you, guys. Are awesome. uh, you guys are really uh, awesome. This we is for you guys, you guys. You guys. Oh, to use by you. the pool. Mm. Let's, let's get a picture here, everybody. Uh, Looking right here. That's great. Beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Oh. Thank you. So now I want to introduce our MC of the evening. She's an animal lover. She's a radio personality. You may not recognize her face, but you will recognize her voice. Cindy Clifford. Yeah. Okay, so there's no microphone, so I really don't know how to do this. <laughs> I want to say that the first time I ever became uh, made aware of the rescue center was when I was getting off Sunrise Highway in Eastport. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay. I was getting off Sunrise Highway in Eastport and there was this bird, it was about this high, this black bird at the standing on the side of the road. I learned later it's a comorant and they're really cool. They're like black egrets. Anyway, this bird's just standing there and of course cars are flying past him so I pull over and I call my friend and she calls her friend and they go, it's the Evelyn Alexander Wildlife Rescue Center. Here's the number. I call up, I go, listen, there's this bird here. I don't know what to do. There's something, you know, he's, he's like just standing there. He won't go anywhere. They're like, don't worry, we'll come and get him. They come and get him. I call later, I go, how's the bird? They go, he's fine, there's nothing wrong with him. It occurred to me later, he was probably waiting for the jitney and he was at the wrong <laughs> <laughs> But most of the animals that wind up there, wind up there for legitimate reasons, because something has happened to them and they need our help. And the thing about being an animal lover is you'll pretty much do anything you can within your power. And sometimes the most power you have is to get in touch with the rescue center and say, you know, please do something for this animal. How many of you have actually been there? 
this to watch to see the animals that are there like to get better and are going to go out and have a wonderful life maybe catch the jitney or to see animals that are like that can never be released again and they're living their whole life there it's it's incredibly inspiring and it makes you so proud to be any kind of a part of that and i want to thank you all because you're already a part of it and and we really appreciate it now, you should be getting a text on your phone. It's okay to look at it. It's not Pokemon Go. <laughs> How many people play Pokemon Go? I'm just curious. Ingrid. <laughs> anyway, if you click on that text, there is a link that you can text and you can make a donation to the, re to the wildlife fund, to the wildlife rescue center. There is a different amount, whatever amount you want to click. Like, please be our guest and do that. If you don't have a phone or you haven't already made a bid on an auction and we don't have your text number, then raise your hand. Someone will be swooping in to help you. Do you like that? I made that. Swooping. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thank you. How long have you been practicing? <laughs> no, I just thought of it. It's like, you know, like a radio. And I don't even have a microphone. I can't believe it. <laughs> so, yeah. so did, did everybody get the text? Kelly, do you texted everybody? Okay. Yeah. Also, I, I don't know if you've all had an opportunity to take a look at all the art that's up for bid, but how many of you have bid on the art? Oh, not enough. Not enough, but not you know, enough. there's still time to get in there and bid on it. And we just want to, again, thank you for all your support for showing up tonight. Yeah, it was a little warm, but now it's like perfect. It is nice now. It's getting nice. It is nice. You want to take one? We have a couple shout outs that we want to do. Dr. Justin Molnar, please come up here. We want to introduce you to Dr. Justin Molnar. He takes our animals tirelessly. So, Shinnecock Animal Hospital is his business. Shinnecock Animal Hospital is his business. What and he we does good? for us will blow your mind. <laughs> Surgery, he takes cancer off a little mouse's face. He comes on his day off to take care of bald eagles. Uh, I can't even begin to tell you all the things he's done for us. He's unbelievable. He saved our so Akita. <laughs> will, you had a shout out? Yeah, I want to shout out to uh, Howard Curtis? Stern's wife first. She's Howard gone. Stern's wife, she's Beth, gone. for coming by. She's a big supporter and we appreciate it. Another shout out is to Curtis Lewa, New York City Guardian Angel. Yeah. 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 From here. Yeah. He, he has a show on WABC, New York One, and he shouted on the radio for the past month. He advertised the event, so we really appreciate it. And he's we a big do. animal lover Thank you, himself. Oh, really and an animal rescue. And an animal rescue. Yeah. Now, yeah. Right. Right. Nancy, Nancy. Nancy, come here, Nancy. Where you going? <laughs> <laughs> she also created, uh, tell them. Well, Nancy actually has been involved in animal rescue back in Sunset Park in Brooklyn for many years before I met her, before she got involved with the Guardian Angels. And she had convinced me that we needed to have a wing, not just in New York and nearby and Greenport and Riverhead where we patrol and Huntington Station and Hempstead, but in 13 countries and 130 cities around the world. Wow of animal protection, and it also dawned on me the number of times I've been in very rough areas, as many of you know, and the very gavons, the very knuckle draggers that we were dealing with who are abusing people and abusing their wives and their children, oftentimes start out with the abuse of animals, even with insects, insects to animals, animals to people. And pigeons. They go after pigeons all, all over right, the world. All right, so if we don't, we don't cut them off at the pass at that early age and educate them, particularly new arrivals from other countries where they don't have the same sensibilities, we're doomed to have new generations of animals who undergo that same horrific uh, abuse. So you've got uh, worldwide friends here now and the guardian angels from 13 countries and 100 yeah. years. Welcome back, darlings. I'm Cognac Willalene, and we are here at the Evelyn Alexander Wildlife Rescue Center Benefit. And I'm here with a wonderful person, Mr. Curtis Sua. He's a big supporter of this event. Tell my audience, is this the first time you've ever been to this event? 
Uh, first time, yes, but uh, we as Guardian Angels, we actually have a animal protection division in the urban areas that we patrol, because in addition to all the crime we deal with, there's just a lot of abuse of animals, uh, whether they happen to be pets or strays or feral cats. And in some neighborhoods, uh, there's no way to avoid it. So we I hear such horrible stories about what people do to animals. I think it's a disgrace. I think they should be put in prison and castrated for what they do to these poor, unfortunate animals, whether they be domestic or wild. And no animal or any person should have any kind of abuse happen to them. Tell my audience, what do you think that is? Why do you think people do the things that they do? Do you think it's because of the way the world is? I mean, the stress of life? Uh, lack of education. Uh, a lot of times it's uh, people who are newly arrived into the country where there is no respect for animals in the countries they come from. So that is true. Right. That is true. That is true. But there are many countries out there that do not respect animal life. They just, you know, they think it's just an animal is there just to serve them. Right. So you would think uh, since you have a captive audience in the public schools where their children go, the children should start going to an orientation to make them uh, more adaptable to the mores of our society, which is animal friendly. Uh, but I have tracked a number of degenerates uh, in my life that I've grown up with who have become psychotic uh, serial killers and killers and abusers and rapists who uh, first started out and they were known in the neighborhood to be animal abusers. So there's a direct linkage. Uh, study after study shows that. My own personal experiences growing up in Brooklyn revealed that to me at a young age, that the person that would abuse an animal, go out of their way to kick an animal, throw an animal up against the wall, torture an animal, even insects, is likely to continue that behavior in their own domestic partnership, at the job, with their children. They become abusers of everyone. Not, they start with animals, though. Because the animals are, you know, they, they have no protection, obviously. Well, remember, if they... They're vulnerable. Right, but if they did the same thing to another kid and growing up, an adult would intervene. But if they do the same thing to an animal, oftentimes the adults ignore it. You know, it's none of my business. I don't want to. Meantime, our attitude is guardian angels. Oh, no, that's a crime against society. Uh, you're going to get that's locked exactly up. what it is. A crime against society. I so agree. You know, I heard this was an awful story. I saw something on News 12 that some woman was living in a house in Long Island and she had these rats. Yeah. And she just let them breed and didn't do anything about it. I mean, not that I think anybody should, I mean, a rat is, you know. Sure. But still, to do what she did, I mean, make, make these animals breed the way they are. Oh, and, and remember, neighbors were aware of it. And it, Did you hear that story? Oh, yeah. Uh, if it's not rats one time, it's cats, it's dogs, it's multiple animals, uh, 50, 60, 70, they're emaciated. Uh, they, That's abusive, too. It is, but you find out oftentimes these people were imbalanced, they were emotionally disturbed, there should have been an intervention early on, and neighbors, they remain quiet. They have like window shades on their eyes, cotton balls in their ears, a zipper on their mouth, no, mind your own business. So uh, that's unfortunate, because maybe if an intervention was done by a, a mental health worker early on, uh, the animals wouldn't have been subjected to that abuse, and they wouldn't have started hoarding animals, because they're hoarding animals, they, weigh, they would hoard newspapers or little tchotchkes, except in this case, it's not just hoarding, it's you're turning animals, uh, you're abusing them, and oftentimes the animals are so hungry they start turning on one another, and they start attacking one another and hurting one another, it's, it's really a vicious cycle. My audience, uh, Curtis, why did you get involved in the Guardian Angels? What made you, what, what, what did it for you? What made you want to become involved in it? Well, it's 37 years since I started the group in the Bronx. I was a night manager uh, of a Mickey D's McDonald's. And the Bronx was coming unglued, uh, burning down at night. There were gangs everywhere. People, if they had the wherewithal, were escaping across the George Washington Bridge into New Jersey. But if they were on a fixed income, they had to hunker down. And I just decided enough was enough. So I uh, recruited my closing crew, put the arm on them, and then, based on our good deeds initially, 
a lot of regular people started joining us who were really sincere. They really wanted to get involved, and that's how we grew, and that's how we're now in 13 countries, 130 cities. 13 countries? Oh, yeah, and even, Tell in, uh, even in this area. We're in uh, nearby Greenport in the North Fork, Riverhead, Huntington Station, Hempstead, all of them with severe gang problems. Tell my audience, what are the other countries you're involved with? Well, first world countries, uh, we can go from Japan and South Korea to third world countries like the Philippines, or Brazil, where the Olympics are, Rio, that's where we patrol on a regular basis, Mexico City, Lima, Peru, Cape Town, South Africa, but we're also in uh, Geneva, Switzerland, London, uh, in England, and a whole host of cities throughout Italy. My goodness, what it has become since you joined this organization, isn't that amazing? Well, it's uh, what all people really want to do when they're, they're born and raised, they want to be like superheroes, crime fighters but then they become very jaded and skeptical, or they want to venture out and help people, and uh, they, they're paralyzed by fear, fear of getting sued, fear that uh, they may I be- I know that, darling. Right, and you know, a lot of lawyers, uh, they, uh, they perfect their martial arts uh, skill in the art of I sue. So if people become paralyzed by fear about what is gonna happen if you get involved, then they never do anything. And I've always been proactive. I've always thrown caution to the wind because it, my parents raised me to believe if you do good things, eventually good things will happen. In karma. Yeah, you don't ask when, where, or why. I mean, after I got locked up. That's seven, karma. Right, but after I got locked up 76 times, I was saying, Mom and Dad, when is something good going to happen here? They keep running me in and out of the system. Well, you're doing terrific work, and everybody here loves what you're doing, and that's why you're invited to this event tonight. Can you tell my audience, where can we go to learn more information about the Guardian Angel? On oh, this uh, day and age, you just uh, hook up your computer, your iPhone, smartphone, and just go to www.guardianangels.org. You're terrific. And what about this event? Can you tell my audience where we could go to find out more information about the... Uh, Evelyn Alexander Wildlife Rescue Center. Well, I'm connected to them because uh, two of their honorees, uh, Will and Ingrid, are big supporters of the Guardian Angels in the city. And because this is, um, this is animal uh, rescue in the great wilds of Suffolk County, it uh, fits nicely with what we do in the city. And I believe they have their own website if you just go to that. You're terrific. Give me a kiss. Don't go away yet. We'll be back in a moment, darlings. More interviews coming up. Keep watching. Pink Champagne Kisses. Take a picture, Michael. Take a picture. Hello, darlings. You've all heard of Marilyn Monroe. Some of you know Bridget Fardell. Well, now it's time for the Cognac Show. dressed to impress one of a kind girl it's been a crybaby productions darlings